What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we have the boat completely torn apart right now, doing some wintertime maintenance. We're rerunning wiring for the grass. We're upgrading the wiring and uh, just kind of straightening everything up. So it looks like a bomb went off out here. But while I had everything torn apart, I wanted to do a video and cover a topic that I see a lot of questions and confusion on still to this day, even though these two systems and networks have been around forever. It's regarding the ethernet versus the NEMA 2000 network on your boat. I see a lot of questions on what are the differences, when do I need each one, what do they both do and allow you to share, and how do you set them up. So that's what we're going to cover here today. I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible for you guys. Um, like always, just in case there's anybody out there who's brand new to this, just trying to learn, you know, right out of the gate. So let's start with Ethernet. It's the simple, it's the easier of the two. They're both very simple as you're going to see, um, but the Ethernet is definitely the easier of the two. Basically, to set up an Ethernet system on your boat, an Ethernet network, all you need is an Ethernet cable. Looks like this. It has the same end on the same connection on both ends. They're both male connections. All right, so you're going to take this Ethernet cable, comes in different sizes. You can get this is a six footer. I also have a 15 footer back here. They come in 25s, 50s. Um, they used to make it in two footers, but they don't make those anymore, I don't believe. But you can get them in different lengths, whatever suits your needs. And all you're going to do is take whatever size you need, take that Ethernet cable, and on the back of your fish finder, we run all the ranches, of course, um, on this boat, but on the back of your fish finder, you're going to have Ethernet ports or connections, plugs, whatever you want to call them. This unit has two. This is one of my 16-inch HDS lives. has two Ethernet ports, the yellow ports here. So all you're going to do is take that Ethernet cable, plug it into one of those ports, run it to another fish finder, and plug it into that fish finder. That's it. That's all you need to do to connect your units via Ethernet. Now, if you have multiple fish finders on your boat, we run four on this boat. So I, I run two 12-inch HDS lives at the wheel and two 16-inch HDS lives at the bow for a total of four. All you're going to do is, in that situation, is take one cable, plug it into one port, run it to fish finder. Let's call it fish finder number two. Take a separate cable, plug it into the other port, run it to fish finder number three. And then for that fourth one, you can just daisy chain it and run a cable from Fish Finder 3 to Fish Finder 4. The only, so that, that's all there is to it. You just run these Ethernet cables from graph to graph to graph. That's all you have to do to connect them via Ethernet. Before I talk about what it allows you to share, the only time you would need something more than just Ethernet cables, let's say you're running a smaller graph or a lower end graph that only has a single yellow port on the back. So it just has one Ethernet port instead of two. But let's say you have three of those units on your boat. Well, if you think about it and do the math, you can't connect three units together by going graph to graph to graph when there's only one port on each unit. Then in that case, you would need what's called an, um, an NEP-2 expansion hub. I'll put a picture of it on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. It's basically just a little box that you mount in your boat and it has multiple ethernet ports on it. And so in that case, what you would do, instead of going graph to graph to graph, you would go from graph from your single yellow port. So go graph to that expansion hub, graph number two to that expansion hub, graph number three to that expansion hub. All right. So that's how you would connect multiple units via Ethernet if you only have one port on each one of your units. All right. So that's how you would connect via Ethernet. That's all there is to it, guys. It's, it's it, don't overthink it. That's it's literally that simple. Now, as far as what Ethernet allows you to do versus NEMA 2000, so Ethernet. Years ago, when I was kind of learning this stuff and just kind of getting out, getting started doing all my own working and wiring and all that good stuff, the easiest way for me to remember this was if you think about Ethernet as almost kind of like an internal network. And what I mean by that is, Ethernet allows you to share information like um, information that's kind of stored and coming from your fish finders themselves. Mapping is the biggest one. So let's say you put a, a Navionics mapping card in one of your one of your fish finders. If you're connected via Ethernet, you're going to be able to view that mapping system on all of your graphs. Um, another biggie is waypoints. So let's say you store a waypoint on one of your fish finders. Well, if you're connected via Ethernet, that if you store a waypoint on unit one, it's going to store to all of your other graphs as well. So if you jump up on the front of the boat, turn that, that, that unit on, that waypoint is going to pop up on that unit as well. Um, it also allows you to share routes and trails. So all of that kind of information that is kind of stored in your fish finder, 
that's what I mean by internal network. That was just the easiest way for me to remember, you know, what the Ethernet allowed you to do and allowed you to share versus NEMA 2000. If it works for you, kind of tuck that away. You know, if not, you know, come up with your own way to remember it. But uh, again, so mapping, waypoints, routes, trails, sonar, things like that. That's what Ethernet allows you to share. All right. That simple, guys. Okay. NEMA 2000. Let's talk about that real quick and what the differences are. So NEMA 2000 network, it's a little bit more complex. It's still very simple, as you're going to see, but it is a little bit more complex than the Ethernet. So NEMA 2000, think about it this way. Think about it as an external network. So the, the Ethernet, that was kind of internal. NEMA 2000, if you think about it as an external network, and what I mean by that is that's what's going to allow you to share information to all of your fish finders like external GPS pucks, like the point one from Lowrance or you know weather modules that you may mount to the boat um radars things like that or some guys run temperature probes in their live wells so something like that that you would be adding to your live wells they're external components that you're adding to your boat um engine data sensors or modules that's another biggie that people would run so anything external like that external modules or pucks or gps units radars whatever anything external like that Again, that was just an easy way for me to remember. That's what NEMA 2000 allows you to share and view on your fish finders. All right, so as far as how do you set up a NEMA 2000 network, it's very, very simple. I see people overthink this. And again, if you're new to this, it, it can be a little confusing or a little intimidating, but I'm gonna break it down and make it try to make it as simple as possible for you. All the NEMA 2000 network is, it's, it consists of what we call a backbone, which is this. All this is, it's a bunch of T's that look like this, like these two, these are T's. You just connect them together. They come with a female end, a male end, and then the top of the T. All you're gonna do is the obvious, male to female end, plug them in, screw them together, and now those two are connected. You have to decide or determine on your boat how many T's you're gonna need. And I'll show you what they, you know, what, what they all do and so you can kinda determine how many you do need. But that's all a backbone is. It's just a bunch of these T's connected, let me flip that around, male to female, um, and screw them together so that way they're, they're connected together. All right? Now, let me show you, I have seven T's on my NEMA 2000 network, or on, on my backbone, that's what we call this. So on my backbone, you have to determine how many things you have on your boat that is gonna connect via NEMA 2000 and how many you wanna connect via NEMA 2000. So I have seven T's because I have four fish finders. They all have their own NEMA 2000 cable. So fish finder number one, number two, number three, number four. All right, so these are my two 12s at the wheel. These are my two 16s at the bow. T number five for me, this would go to my point one GPS um, puck from Lowrance. Again, external puck, it's gonna go to the NEMA 2000 network. So when you buy a point one, it comes with a cable coming out of the bottom of the puck, and that cable on the other end is gonna screw into one of these T's on the NEMA 2000 network. That's how you're gonna connect to the NEMA 2000 backbone for that. Um, T number six, for me, this is my ghost trolling motor. The ghost trolling motor, on the pedal of it, it has a NEMA 2000 cable coming out of it that, that comes with the, the, the trolling motor. So you just run that cable to your backbone, plug it in there, now your ghost is connected via NEMA 2000 network. Just allows you to take, take advantage of all the features on it. The last module, so no matter how many T's you have, again, this is gonna vary boat by boat. All right, you have to determine how many T's you need, how many individual modules or fish finders or whatever you're connecting. The last module for me, or I'm sorry, the last T for me, this is the power module, the power T, if you want to call it that. The NEMA 2000 has to be powered on its own source. So if you think about the Ethernet that we talked about, you didn't need power for that. It was just a cord going from graph to graph to graph. Well, the NEMA 2000 has to have its own power. I'm going to put a link down below the video um, for, it's called the NEMA 2000 Starter Kit. Um, it's a kit that comes with basically everything you need to get started and create a backbone, including the power wire, the harness. So the power T, all it is, is all you're going to do for any of these T's, you're going to take a NEMA 2000 cable. Before I get ahead of myself, let me show you what these look like. So the Ethernet, if you remember, had two male connections. Well, the NEMA 2000 cables, again, they come in all different lengths. They have a female and a male end. All right, so all you're going to do, you're going to take the NEMA 2000 cable, take the male end, 
put it on top of one of your tees. And again, you just screw it on. Can't really mess it up. You just mail the female, screw it in place. And then you would take the female end of that cord or cable and run it to whatever you're connecting, whether it's your fish finder. Um, I'll show you what they look like on the back of my the HDS Lives. It's that small black port right there by my finger. Um, so that's what you would do with these NEMA 2000 cables. Okay, so every T is gonna have its own cable. So you'd have this cable going to one of my fish finders, another cable going to a different fish finder, a, a third one going to my third fish finder, a fourth cable going to my fourth. You get, you, you know what I'm saying. So every one of these T's is gonna have its own cable going to either a fish finder or a module, whatever you're connecting to the network. That last power T, if you get that starter kit that I mentioned a couple minutes ago, it comes with a um, the power cord. So it's basically just it's a NEMA 2000 cable that you would screw into the in, into this T just like I did over here. But on the other end, instead of the female end, it would have power wires. It would have the red and black for positive and negative. You can run that. Um, you have to run that to power. You can take it direct to your battery with an inline fuse. Or what I would recommend is take it to, um, I, would, I would have it on a switched power source. What I mean by that is the way I did mine was I ran the power wire for my NEMA 2000 backbone. I ran that to my fuse block underneath my console that's controlled with my main power switch to the boat. So when I hit that switch and I turn that power switch off on my boat, it also powers off my NEMA 2000 network. I highly recommend you do that one way or the other. Put it on a switch somehow. That's the easiest way to do it. Find the fuse block on your boat that's connected to your main power switch and hook it up to that fuse block. If you don't, let's say you just ran this direct to your battery with an inline fuse, this backbone is always going to be getting power. So your, your point one would be getting power. It's always going to be powering through these cables, which is going to draw on your battery, of course. So highly recommend, again, the easiest way to do it is your power T, the cable that comes off here with the red and black. Find the, the fuse block on your boat that is powered by your main switch. Run it to that fuse block. That way, when you turn your main power off on your boat, it also powers down your NEMA 2000 network. That's all there is to it. The only other thing you need to do, and this is a mistake I see some people make, if you get that starter kit that I mentioned, it also comes with what we call terminator caps or terminator ends, whatever you want to call them. You get a male and a female in that kit if you choose to go with that kit. So if you look at, let me just unscrew this cable here real quick so it doesn't get in the way or, or you know, make it any more confusing. So when you're looking at your backbone, which again, the backbone is just your T's, that's all it is. The backbone has a male end and a female end because you're just connecting those T's, male to female. So obviously you're gonna have a male on one side, a female on the other. Again, these Terminator caps, you get a male and a female cap. So you're gonna do the obvious. You're just gonna take the female cap, put it on the male end of the backbone, just pops on, screw it in place, and then male end to the female end of the, the backbone. I might've said that on the other side, but you know what I'm saying. Male to female, female to male, <laughs> can't mess it up. Um, you need these terminator caps on your backbone. This is a mistake I see people make. Um, you know, if somebody posts in one of the forums or whatever and says they can't get their NEMA 2000 network to work, you know, I'll ask, hey, post a picture of what you did. Let me see your backbone. This is one of the mistakes I see people make. They won't have the terminator caps on the end or they'll just have one terminator cap on and the other end will be open or they'll have a cable coming off this going to like one of the fish finders or something you cannot do that it will not work the entire NEMA 2000 system will not work if you do that so you have to have those terminator caps on the end of your backbone all right so those are really the two things you have to remember terminator caps on the ends um, and then the power of course you have to figure out how many T's you need as well but as long as you get the right number of T's that you need for your setup whatever you're running Remember those Terminator caps, make sure it's powered, preferably to a switch. That's really all there is to it, guys. That is the NEMA 2000 network. Um, don't overthink it, it's, it's really not hard. Again, if you've never done this before, it can be a little confusing and a little intimidating, but that's literally all there is to it. It's just a bunch of T's, how many ever you need for your boat, Terminator caps, power wire, hopefully to a switch. I would highly recommend that. And then cords going to each fish finder or whatever you need to, to connect to the network. 
the last thing I'm going to cover is where to mount this. Um, there is no right or wrong answer. I've seen people mount this in rod lockers or I, wherever. You could really mount this kind of wherever you want. I like to keep mine. I zip tie it up underneath my console here um, for a couple reasons. Number one, it's kind of out of the elements. Um, number two, it's a kind of a centralized location. So that way all of my NEMA 2000 cords that I have coming from my fish finders, my ghost, my point one, it's kind of a center point of the boat um, to make sure all of those cables reach my, my backbone okay. All right, but again, no right or wrong. I mean, you can mount it wherever you want, out of the way, you know, wherever wherever is convenient for you. I just like it up underneath the console. I don't even know it's there. It's zip tied up there out of the way and all my cords fit and, uh, you know, reach it without, it without an issue. So hopefully this makes it simple for you guys. Um, uh, again, I see these these systems have been around forever, but I still see a lot of questions and confusion on Ethernet and NEMA 2000, how to set them up and what the differences are. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. If you have any questions that I didn't cover, leave them down below and I'll get them answered for you. And I uh, appreciate all you guys watching. Hopefully this helped you guys out to understand these systems a little bit better and help you out on the water. So, all right guys, take care. We will see you on the vi next video. Stay safe.